Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Rauner with Community Coronavirus Update number 26. Uh, themes today is uh, the Aaron Bromage quote, if you don't solve the biology, the economy won't recover, and masks, the fiscal conservative solution. So a lot's been coming out about masks lately. So how are we doing with data? So uh, I've used this slide in the past about the history of the last pandemic we had. And what we had is, of course, is variations across the country from Philadelphia to St. Louis to Minneapolis. And who are our equivalents today? Who got it wrong initially? Who's getting it wrong secondarily? And who's actually maintaining a good uh, approach? Uh, well, if we look at state by state, it's a mixed message just like before. You had New York, which had the major outbreak that scared everybody, but they've really got pushed their, their uh, spread down to quite low levels, actually. They're now one of the better uh, states in the country. Nebraska started out great, but then we kind of messed up with our meat processing facilities, sort of smoldered for a while, got a little better, although there's some worry about the protests in Omaha and Lincoln pushing things back up again, maybe. Uh, you had someone who did really well for a while, Arizona, which is, has cases rising dramatically, and you have sort of one of those double peak places. You had Florida with their spring break, got a little better, started opening things up, and now they're going to be more like St. Louis, which had an initial small wave, and now headed toward a much bigger second wave. And there's a lot of fear across the country the second wave could be much worse than the first uh, if uh, states, especially in the south, don't get their act together. Um, looking at it proportionally, of course, you had, you know, New York and New Jersey with some of the highest rates uh, per, per million, Nebraska, you know, initially doing well, then not doing so well, but lately maybe getting a little better. And then states all across the South, Arizona, Alabama, Arkansas, South Carolina, North Carolina, all having rates rising dramatically. So we may end up seeing some uh, second waves that are worse than the first in the South, especially. And of course, locally, it's the same thing across the Nebraska. There's Nebraska on average, and there's every community's experience. Hall and Saline County, where two of our meat processing facility outbreaks had very big spreads, but actually have done a really good job of tamping down their outbreaks. Lancaster County, and these aren't proportional, by the way. The list would be actually much smaller than this one if it was proportional, which I'll show in a second. Uh, Lancaster County has kind of been you know, doing pretty good, actually. Slightly decreased train. Don't seem to be much of an increase from the protests yet. Douglas and South Sarpy County, though, are a little worrisome. Are we seeing some after effect from those, uh, from those protests coming up there? If you want to explore these yourself, we have made this public Tableau site. So if you go to the, the, the comments section of the YouTube video, you can click on this link and you can literally highlight each county you want and look at it. Uh, Ted will try to be updating these about every, one, every uh, one to three days. So if you want to kind of see how we're doing yourself and run your own maps, you can do that actually. Um, how do we look proportionally compared to New York? I think this is good to show us in comparison that we had many communities that actually had worse outbreaks than New York on a population level. Uh, comparatively, you know, Lincoln, Lancaster counties really kept pretty low, so not too bad, but Douglas County uh, up there higher and worse than New York City and worse than Hall County and worse than Saline County right now, which is uh, somewhat puzzling uh, as far as the governor's announcement yesterday because it didn't seem to correlate with that, which I'll get to in a minute. So the big theme today, though, is mass, the fiscal conservative solution. So I'm a native Nebraskan, sixth generation, and I grew up uh, in rural western Nebraska with a, you know, a Depression-era grandmom. Uh, I th always thought Nebraskans were very pragmatic, uh, practical people who wanted to, you know, not spend too much money they didn't have. And to me, I think mask is the fiscal conservative solution. It works and it's cheap, so what's not to like? Uh, lots of studies coming out just in the last two weeks. So this one in the Lancet, Spate Lancet, basically it's a review article studying all prior published articles. Uh, basically the conclusion was that face mask use could result in a large reduction in risk infection. Uh, not quite as good as an N95, which I think caused some confusion. The N95 mask, sure it works better, but the cloth mask may be good enough basically for what we need to do. Uh, yet another study, and again, you know, the, the problem with an N95 mask, people were only looking at it at the receiving end, not the sending end. And for if, if both people are wearing even a cloth mask, there's a huge reduction. And so that's where the, the push toward more universal or close to universal mask use is coming from. Uh, this next study out of England, actually, they actually looked at a proportional difference, meaning they looked at a whole bunch of scenarios using infectivity rates of 2.2 and 4. 4 is important because that's actually what some people are thinking the infectivity rate of coronavirus is actually, although with other interventions could be lower, 2.2 for example. But if you get a higher proportion of people wearing the mask, if you hit to a certain level, you actually can drop uh, infectivity down to the effective infectivity down to, to, to less than 1, which basically stops the epidemic. So again, mask wearing likely to work. Uh, this study out of the CDC, uh, basically of the U.S. Navy service members and the Theodore Roosevelt, uh, studying what they did uh, during the outbreak, and they actually looked and surveyed all the all the sailors based on who was getting infected, and found out that wearing a mask, avoiding common areas, and social distancing all worked basically. So the findings reinforce the importance of a non-surgical pharmaceutical intervention, such as wearing a face covering. So it works. Uh, yet another study in Germany, and this is a really interesting study. We can't do randomized controlled trials. 
trials, which are the gold standard, because it's it's hard to do that during a pandemic. It might not be ethical to do it anyway. But this they took advantage of what's called a natural experiment. As masks became available in different areas of Germany, they were able to then track the spread when the mass actually became available. And simply the availability of that mass was showing a 40% reduction uh, in growth. And that wasn't necessarily everybody would wear a mask, just having them available and people starting to wear them, they started seeing a 40% decrease uh, due to mask wearing. So the evidence is basically rock solid. It's on the level, almost the evidence of uh, level of evidence of two plus two weeks equals four, or the sky is bluer when I drop a rock, it falls to the ground. It's getting to be that level of, of uh, you know, at least in the public health community, there is no debate, mask work, use them. Uh, and we even have uh, James Lawler, uh, one of the experts that uh, the governor uh, seems to cite quite a bit. He's one of our nation exper experts at UNMC, citing essentially writing op-ed yesterday to paper with some of his colleagues, universal mask wearing is truly necessary. So it's not of any debate of any expert at any level in the, in the country that masks do work. Um, so to me, I'd say that's a fiscal conservative solution. Masks and cloth face coverings, they're the least expensive, most effective intervention we have to open up the economy and get kids back to school. And I'm a school board member. I so want to get our kids back to school, but we need to do our part and get the infectivity down to where it's safe for us to do that. And that's up to you guys to do. Uh, and, and we've seen country after country where this works. So Japan is a prime example. It's a much more dense population. And so people say, well, New York couldn't change things because their, their population density was too high. Well, Japan's far more dense than New York, actually, but they were able to control their epidemic with good contract tracing, uh, responding quickly, and people wearing masks. So a couple of these, these are pictures of a Japanese elementary school, which is in Tokyo, back in session, kids wearing masks, across, uh, pictures from people across the country, even the Westerners, this guy and this gal, also wearing masks. This is a picture my daughter, who lives in Kyoto, took today. This is an outsourced outside Mall Street, here they all wearing masks because they can't be six feet apart in this area, so they're wearing masks. This is kind of akin to a farmer's market. So in a farmer's market, when they're crowded like this, you all need to be wearing masks, just like the Japanese are doing. So next thing I'm worried about though is data. Uh, we still do not have the amount of data transparency that I think would cause trust and, and good decision making in Nebraska. I do like this uh, communication tool of low, moderate, high, and severe, but what we're not seeing is how is that needle being set? It's like having a speedometer. If it's not accurate, it's not very helpful. Uh, it's nice to have some independent people looking at it because you might think you're going 75 miles an hour, but if the cop uh, shoots his radar at you, you're going 90, you're still getting a ticket whether you think you're 75 or 90. How do we have this set? Um, well, we've got some good benchmarks out there. Uh, this one by Ali Khan, the Dean of our College of Public Health. He's an internationally recognized expert. He's actually thrown out some numbers that he thinks are pretty reasonable based on the international data he's looking at. It's very similar to the covidlocal.org data that I've seen. Uh, and what's worrisome though is that the data, if you look at all these national benchmarks, we're not in the green or even yellow category across the state, folks. So an example, for example, they are using this in the, in the UNMC data, and they're using this risk for disease, for disease transmission is what they're using this for. And Nebraska is still in the orange-red category, not consistent with what the governor put out yesterday. Now, certainly our hospital availability is still doing good, but the problem is this trend follows this about by about six to weeks. So whether this is continues at green depends on what's happening here. And right now, it's not looking like this is going to be the case. So yes, our hospitals are fine now, but they may not be in six weeks if we don't start looking at this category, which is how far the disease is spreading. Uh, the hospital, like I say, it's a trailing indicator six weeks after your spread. Uh, so if we applied the, these benchmarks to Lincoln right now, uh, this is what Ted and I put together on Tableau. These are actual Lincoln numbers with a seven-day moving average. These are those thresholds that Ali Khan and other experts across the world are using. This would be green, this would be yellow, this would be orange, this is red. Our trend is toward, yeah, maybe orange, uh, and hopefully we'll get down to green, but we're not there yet. So this idea that, oh, we're almost green, we can all do everything we want to do right now is completely not true based on anybody with any public health expertise. Uh, Dr. Khan, like I said, is a CDC expert, got his uh, training in Emory. I got my training at Johns Hopkins. We can't reproduce this. Uh, when we look at, our, at the data ourselves, this is what we're getting. Uh, again, Douglas County to me is the wor most worrisome right now. If you look at that, the international benchmarks, uh, Douglas County would be firmly in the red category right now, but that's not the way they're acting in Douglas County, it doesn't seem. Uh, you may actually be getting a little bit of an increase here after those protests, for example, which could make it worse. If you look at the UNMC data, uh, they're kind of showing the same thing. Disease rest is high red category. Yes, the hospital uh, beds aren't full yet, but that's because this hasn't, hasn't had time to trickle down to the hospitals and have people ever get sick. Uh, that's also why uh, John James Lawler in his op-ed yesterday said, a recent day in census for critical ill patients at UNMC, 35 was higher than ever, and of those, half were under the age of 60 and half were on ventilators. And so this is the, the, what's starting to happen is actually going up, not down. Uh, so which, was, which is why I can't quite understand this, because if anything, if you look at the data, 
Douglas County should be tightening its measures. Lincoln may be getting a little looser, and if any of these people should be loose, yet they're still in phase two, which I don't quite understand. Uh, if you look at uh, the Central District Department, Health Department, District, they're green, and if you look at the, the trade, they're down to green. If anybody should be opening up, it's them, not Omaha. So uh, I think it needs to go back to what is the actual infection that's happening in the community right now, and people seem to keep forgetting it. They keep looking at these models saying, oh, the, the model says this is going to happen in four weeks. All that's based on what's already happened, not what's going to happen. So what, this article from uh, Thomas Ingleby is out of John Hopkins, Hopkins talk about what is the actual infectiousness of coronavirus. It's got an R-naught or in the four range, and a four range means that uh, effectively one person infects four more, who then infect four more, who then infect four more. This is exponential growth, and this is really scary. We need to get down to R1 or less, so one person infects one at most or less or less. Uh, this is what happened in Wuhan. You had uh, our, our, if the effective uh, infectivity up in the four range at times until they put internet ventions in place. But they did draconian quarantining and, and, and uh, city lockdown, which we're just not going to do here. Well, we can get down to this area, but only if people do the right thing. Wear masks, uh, six feet distance, and use some common sense. Uh, and with an R naught of three to four, herd immunity means we've got about two-thirds to three-quarters of the population have to get infected for this stop. And we do not want to get that far that fast. So RT, or the effective transmission, is the guide of what we're going to do. So in the schools, for example, let's say I'm in an elementary school. Does six feet plus a mask plus cohorting the kids to, to a class size less than 15 get us to less than one? If it doesn't, then we got to do more. We may have to go to a half-day school. At the end of the day, if this doesn't decrease, we got to do more. We don't get to decide that. The mayor doesn't decide that. The governor doesn't get to decide that. I don't get to decide that. Either it happens or it doesn't. So we need to get that spread down. And so before we go opening the schools, and I really want them, we've got less than two months to get down to the to a one case uh, per 100,000 community spread. The reason we need to get that low is that if you're still getting 100 cases of community spread, that could go up to 6,000 in one to two weeks, especially if we sent the kids to school without a mask. And so uh, I get it. You don't want to wear a mask, but this is literally what happens. And if you want to even consider not wearing a mask and being green, you need to be a, uh, case spread rates of less than one because one case spread can bloom to 60. Well, 60 is manageable. 6,000 is not manageable for our state. You would overwhelm our hospital rapidly with a spread like that. So, and we've learned from others. So people think, oh, schools aren't worth things spread. Well, here's a, a just from a few weeks ago in Israel, they had 130 cases at a single school. Uh, they had to shut down the school. So we do not want to have to shut down those schools, which means we need to get spread down where it needs to be. And we need people to use common sense and start being open to wearing a mask. So again, uh, this is what we need to do. We are right here as of today. We need to be down here in less than two months. So you and the community start need to start doing things. When you go to the grocery store, when you go to the farmer's market, you need to start masking up when you're less than six feet away from people. So again, opening up prematurely with 100 cases a week community spread and no mask could put us at 6,000 a week. That would force us to another lockdown like we just went through. We do not want to go through that. Uh, like uh, Dr. Aaron Bromage says, if you don't solve the biology of the economy, you won't recover no matter how much you want it to. Uh, if we get into a point where our hospitals are overwhelmed and, and thousands of residents are dying, you will shut down the economy even more than we already did. So we need to go to our part. You need to wash your hands, wear a mask, keep your six feet, and use some common sense because we want to be uh, open the economy and get our kids back to school again. So hopefully it all makes sense to you again. Uh, HealthyLincoln.org website uh, if you want to look at past videos. This is what I do for a living uh, in the state. Um, and hopefully we can get our schools back open again. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. And uh, all the links to the articles I'm citing are on the notes section of the YouTube video.